Ahoy Rovers! Well, in the last video you saw me loft out all the frames for the 650 and build all the frames for the 650. I mean, it was really straightforward. Anyway, this episode, we're going to install those on the Strongback. Now, the Strongback, some of you may have noticed, it was built over here, but we've moved it over here. So we, we're going to have to tweak a few of the measurements on it before we can uh, start installing the, uh, the frames. Anyway, a lot to do, time to crack on. Well, here's a little overview of what we accomplished in this video. Now, after this sequence, I'll go back to the beginning and I'll explain in detail all the steps that are necessary to put the frames on the strong back, to straighten and plumb the strong back, and to ensure that the frames are in their proper positions and the water line all lines up. All right, the first order of business today is to make sure that the uprights are all plumb. So in order to do that, I will just stick a spirit level here on the, um, where the transom is going, and it's looking pretty good. I'll do the same to the other side, and then once we have these locked in place, I mean they are right now, then the next order of business is to make sure that the spacing between all the uprights is correct. And it is, you know, I've double checked that. The tops, on the other hand, we will pull a tape measure from the top here, and we will make sure that the spaces between all the tops are correct. Then we'll relock all the braces and hold them in place. Once we have that, then we're in a position where we can start thinking about putting the frames on. Anyway, Rovers, there is a lot to do. Time to crack on. Okay, so from the construction diagram, I see, yes, this measurement is dead on. I've released this brace right here. I just have it connected with a clamp right now. And I'm just going to make sure that this distance is the same. And it's not, so I'm going to adjust it. Boom, it's dead on right now. So this distance and this distance are now the same. I can take my screws and I can put a screw in there. So now this these two are locked in place and you just carry on down the line doing the very same thing using our construction drawing as a guide. All right, let's go. Well, now the strong back has been plumbed and frames, uh, the supports for frames one through four are perfectly spaced and plumbed. I can focus now on the supports for frame number five. It's a bit tricky because it's quite small and I, have to, I had to wait until everything was plumbed so I could brace against the newly plumbed uh, supports to support frame, uh, supports for frame number five. Can you see the level? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so we have a little laser level running right now, and we're shooting a level line, and I've adjusted the height of the laser level so it's actually just at the water line of what will be the water line. 
All right, now I have to transfer this laser line to the uprights. Now you don't need to go out and buy one of these laser levels because you only need it really this one time or very rarely. You can either rent it or in my case, I was able to borrow it from my neighbor. Now we're getting ready to hang the frames on the strong back. And job one is to put a water line right across the entire frame. So we have our water line right here. And then we've, we're transferring that line to this straight edge. I've done the same on the other side, so there we go. Now we can attach a piece of wood here. Okay, so using the bevel, I want to capture this angle right here. So in order to do that, just set my bevel up along this line and just run the blade and the whole idea is you don't have to be hugely accurate. It's just that when we put the 2x4 on here, we don't want the 2x4 flying over the edge because we'll be plating this with plywood. Anyway, this angle is fine. Now we find a 2x4 and we go to the chop saw. And now we have to set this up to the angle of the bevel. So... There we go, set. Well, now that we've cut the two by four ledger, you want to make sure that the ends don't fly over the edge of the frame and that the top of the 2x4 ledger line up with the, the water line that we just established. Then it's just a matter of securing it with some screws. So now all the frames have a 2x4 ledger attached to them at the water line. Now we can start attaching the frames to the strong back, starting with the transom and moving forward. Now previously you saw me use the laser level to establish a level line, a water line. Now I'm using it to establish a plumb line, which is a vertical line, and it lines up with the center line of the strong back. Now the reason you want to start at the transom and move forward is because potentially each of these frames will block the laser on the frame behind it. By clamping a block to the strong back and then using a shim or a thin wedge, you have terrific control over adjusting the height of the frame to make sure that it is exactly where you want it on the strong back, which means that the ledger is lined up perfectly with the water line. When you're happy with the level, and the plumb of each frame, then secure it with some screws. Now, as you've seen, the gussets on the top of these frames is half inch plywood. So in order to make the frames plumb, you have to stick in a half inch spacer at the bottom of the frames. And that's what I'm doing in this sequence. Now, all that remains or to remove the temporary braces that we had previously put on the frames to keep them from spreading apart. Looking forward through the completed frames. and now looking aft over the completed frames.
Well, Rovers, we got a fair amount accomplished uh, since the last video. We, it really only took about a day to get all these frames up. And it took about a half a day to get the bow piece, the stem support in place. So about a, about a day and a half, it took me about half a day of planning. So let's call it two days to accomplish all this. Not bad, really. It's a, and most of that is due to keeping things simple, you know, and those are the conversations I have every morning with Andy, the architect, is, you know, this is what we want to do, this is the engineering, and how do we then make it really simple? So we work together to accomplish that. Now, I also promised you that I'd go over the material costs, or the material costs to date. All right, so here it goes. So all the material for the strong back came to 406 US dollars. This does not include tax or transport. I've decided to leave both those numbers off all of the totals because that changes for everybody. In fact, we pay really high taxes where I live and everything has to be shipped here. So it would be unfair to include that in the totals. Now the next number is marine lumber and plywood. So that's 28 sheets of 3 8 marine plywood and two sheets of quarter inch maple plywood, uh, enough white oak for the keel timbers and enough pine for the shear stringers. Now the next number includes the epoxy resin. So that's 60 liters of epoxy resin or 15 gallons and enough fiberglass, I believe, to do the entire job as well as the fillers such as the micro balloons. So that gives us a grand total of 5,525 US dollars. Now this total, I know I'll have to spend at least a couple of hundred dollars more on pine to complete the project. And also, this does not include anything toward the sails, the mast, the keels, or any of the hardware such as the gudgeons and pintles, which are the hinges that the rudder relies on. So, you know, there are going to be additional expenses. But th these are the costs to date, and these are the costs that are going to get us a long way into the build. I'd like to honor three new names for the Benefactors bulkhead. Robert Porter, David McCurdy, and Simon Law. These folks have made a donation of $100 US or more and their names are going on a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be coming with me on my circumnavigation. Now these funds make a great impact in offsetting the cost of materials, so a great big thank you. I'd also like to take a moment to welcome our new patrons, Jared Paul, Simon Law, and Clyde Reveille. And Clyde actually moved from helper to rigger. Now your pledges of support help the channel in so many ways. So thank you. So in the next episode, I'm going to be shaping the actual stem piece and attaching it. I'll also be uh, scarfing together some wood to form the shear of the boat. And also, I'd like to go over the progress that we've made to date on the actual building plans. It'll be very interesting, I assure you. All right, so until next time, Rovers, thanks for watching.